start. Start streaming. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone, or good day from down under. Uh, back for our usual Friday show. Hopefully, uh, a couple of people are probably going to throw at me. Casper is probably going to throw at me saying I've changed the time again. Um, this is the new time now, though, on uh, Friday, my time, or Thursday, US and European time. So what is it over there? Let me just check. Um, just so people can get used to this time zone. So it's going to be at basically 10 o'clock uh, London time, 10 p.m. New York time, 5 p.m. And Los Angeles time, 2 p.m. Uh, so that lets you know the time that it will be there. So 2 p.m. Los Angeles. 5 o'clock New York and 10 o'clock uh, London time. So this is the new time it will be each week. Uh, we've had massive daylight savings changes. We've had an hour back here in Australia or an hour forward, I can never remember. And also it's changed in the US as well. I'm not sure if England has daylight savings as well. So the time zones have gone all over the place. In fact, they've switched two hours uh, in some places due to the way that the time zones work. Um, so this this is the new time. So welcome everyone. Uh, we are in pre-show. I'm going to give this a little bit of time to let people know that we're live because no doubt um, it's not going to show up <laughs> in people's, um, they won't get the notification uh, because it always takes so long uh, to come through sometimes. Often I'll get the notification an hour after I've done the live show which cracks me up. Um, so let's see who's here uh, in the live show. Uh, let me just turn off this pre-show so we can see who's in the chat. So Gilbert has said, have a good show, David. He's gone to bed. <laughs> you're getting to bed nice and early, Gilbert. Uh, MJ says, cheers, hope you're all well. Uh, five uh, US Eastern time. Yep, yeah, so that's um, New York time. Roger said, hello from Vancouver. Hello, Roger. John is saying, hello, David Santos. Hello, David. It's 5 p.m. New York time. Alexander said, hi, David. It's 11 p.m. in Malta. <clears throat> Rome time here. Cool. Thanks, Alexander. Um, LT, did I? Uh, 1800 in New Orleans. <clears throat> MJ said, thumbs up, y'all. Yeah, it does help, guys, as you log on. I'll, I'll message you. Notice, I'll say it a couple of times just so uh, people will give that. I received the notification, John. Well, that's good. At least it's came through for you. Like I said, it's uh, up and down like a yo-yo. It's um, Some people are getting them, some aren't. I don't know what's going on with YouTube because it seems to be a bit uh, iffy with the notifications for some reason. I did only give a half an hour notice though this morning because I was busy doing other things, so uh, it might be interesting. Tomek is saying hello from Poland as well. Um, let me know what you're going to do on the weekend. Um, I've got a few Sony sort of related rumours today. It's more about um, Tamron and stuff like that because there's not much Sony news, but there is some Sony news there talking about lenses and things. Um, but it's pretty quiet. I suppose it's getting near Christmas, so until there's more rumours starting to pop out, uh, there's not much there. Altric, g'day Altric, good to see you here, mate. Uh, Barry as well uh, is here as well, Barry Street. Not as, uh, Belgium, it's 23. Uh, see, it's amazing. And the good thing is, with me popping on a bit early, yeah, it might be a bit awkward for sometimes for some of the Americans due to the fact that it is earlier, but at least it gives some of the Europeans a chance to pop on live as well, which is great uh, at the same time. So that's one plus with it all. G'day, Leanna. Um, hey, David, thanks for encouraging me to upgrade to the A6500 uh, to the A7 III. Yep, the A6500 to the A7 III. I bet you're loving it too, Leanna. It's an amazing camera, uh, the A7 III. Um, I get them all the time. Well, that's good, John. Mike said, I heard you start a, a Canon channel in 2020, starting date the 1st of April. <laughs> oh, what a crack up, Mike. Alpine says, g'day from Switzerland. Well, how are you? Um, Carl says, a new time. Yeah, this is the new time, Carl. So it'll be this time every week now until daylight savings changes I think the end of March, I think, uh, it'll stay at this time now um, until that time. Because the, the thing is, it's 9 o'clock here. This is good for me because if it goes for around an hour-ish, then I've still got the day ahead of me. If I leave it much later, it gets then awkward because it, it sort of gets into other things I want to do. Aaron's show that I do on uh, Tuesday, your time in the US and Europe, Wednesday here, uh, will stay at the normal time. We're going to do that at 7 p.m. New York time. Uh, so it's slightly uh, less than what we used to do. It's because of daylight savings, it'll be an hour earlier. But that will be a little bit um, 
a little bit later. Um, hi from Ireland, Camille says uh, there. Uh, Camille, I think it is. Bjorn says, perfect time for Germany. Let me grab another <laughs> Kronbacher. Uh, I'm having just a coffee this morning. It's not, yesterday we were 104 degrees. Melbourne's weather, weather up and, is up and down like a yo-yo in spring here. Uh, today it's only going to be, well, what was it? It was 40, I think nearly 41 yesterday uh, Celsius. Uh, today it is only going to be 22. Um, so I'm not having a beer with you this morning. And plus it's only 9 o'clock, but sometimes I might if it's hot. Um, I'm just having my usual Sony coffee today. So uh, what else have we got? G'day, Fanamiak. I'm just here to say I was here. <laughs> You're probably working. It's more awkward for you. Kevin said, hello, David and everyone. Mike said, it's almost Black Friday. I know. Uh, we Hopefully there'll be some good specials that come out. Uh, John said, 2 p.m. Um, Pacific in California. And the Casper is a loser. <laughs> he had to put that in there. It, well, Casper isn't even in here yet either. Uh, I, it's too early for him. <laughs> I love it. You guys, it cracks me up. Um, all right, so let's start the show. Anyway, I'm still going to have a little chat, but we'll start the show. Uh, let me bring up here. I'm just going to put down show start is 6.20. 6.20. Let me go there. Welcome, everyone. Just had a very small pre-show. I'm still going to leave a little bit of time for people to come in uh, on the live show. Uh, oh, I wanted to show you uh, this little, great little gadget that I've just been sent. Uh, I've just been sent this um, little thing. And I also got, um, I, I don't even know what these do, but <laughs> I've just got this handle too. It's an Insta360 handle. What do they call it? The bullet time or something. And... I've got to work out what it actually does. Is it going to unfocus on me? Let's see if I can make it unfocus. Face detection is so strong on these cameras, it won't let go. So I've got that and a little stand that it came with. Uh, and the 360X1, I think it is, a 1X, uh, they've sent me. Um, so fantastic. Well, I love little toys like this. I can't wait to take this uh, to the US. Um, because I'm going to have a ball in Disneyland and stuff like that with this uh, little thing. I'm thinking about, because I'm going to review it. I mean, it's mine. They sent it to me, so thank you so much. But um, I think I might go and do a review around Melbourne. I thought I'd go and do some touristy things, and then I can show you guys uh, my home city uh, in a 360-type perspective. So I might do that uh, on Sunday, which is which should be really good fun. I don't even know how to use this yet, so it's going to be interesting. Let me know if anyone else has got one. Be, I'd be curious to know what you guys think about them. It's tiny though, isn't it? And I believe that with this stick, because this, this stick folds right out, there's something in the software or whatever, I'm not sure what it is, but it gets rid of the stick. So I think you see me, but you won't see the stick sort of hanging out. I, I believe that's how this works so stay tuned for that so that's really exciting so thanks so much for sending me that um, I don't get many of the really expensive stuff and that's more expensive and it's uh, it's great so I can't wait to use it the other thing I thought I'd show you is um, I'm just gonna do a review of a light today but I thought I'd show you how I've set up my rig um, to film it uh, I've been sent it's a I'll show you just so you can have a quick look I'll grab it so you can see it Because I haven't, um, I haven't looked at any of these lights yet. As you know, I am a bit of a light, a light junkie. I've got that much lighting gear, but I do love anything to do with lighting. So this one is the first time that I'll be using, it's a Falcon Eyes, and it's the first time I'll be using one that has this sort of diffuser built into it. Um, so I'm interested to see what this sort of light gives me. You can run it from battery as well, which is good. Um, so stay tuned for the review of that, but I think I'm going to shoot that today. Uh, let me put that over there. So I've set up the rig to do it, and um, this is going to be my little rig. I mean, look at this. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> I love this. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm using that Soonwell handle, which, uh, funny thing was, uh, we, t we talked about one on, on the show I did with Aaron on Wednesday. 
Uh, this has a dummy battery in it from for the Z battery, so I can run this all day. Now off that, off this soon well, I'm running the uh, Ninja V, which is here, and I'm also running the camera all off the same battery. Now you can see if I push into here that you'll get the lights show up to show the charge, so I have charged it. And to turn it on, all I do is I just click on the back button there, and it glows red to let me know it's on, and then I can switch it all on. I'll show you, let me turn it on. Oops, where is the power switch there? So this is all running from, um, from this, oh, I've got to switch it on there actually. You see how it goes red? That means it's turned on. Uh, I'll turn that on and then it will boot up. So this is all running from the one battery. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit heavy, but I do like the fact that it's not too bad. I do love using, as I'm getting more and more into video, I do love using um, more and more of handles because it, the funny thing is the lighter the rig is, the harder it is to handhold if you're, if you're handholding video gear. The more weight that's involved, it tends to be easier to, re to shoot really good footage without it being on a gimbal and things like that. And I've sort of worked that out as I've been going on, that I can hold these and get really good footage out of it. If I try and do it with just the camera, it's a lot hard. There's something about the weight when you're putting on, these on that... Uh, makes it harder if there's a bit of heft to the gear, which is really interesting. And this is fantastic because this little rig, for, I've got it in a cage from Small Rig, um, but then I can just turn this around like that. So I can face it towards me if I want to go that way, but then if I move out to the front and I want to do stuff, I can just flick that around like that. Um, I've just got to watch that power thing that's there. Uh, it'll flick right around. So how good is that system? What a great system. And I've still got a spare couple of ports on here that I can charge other things to. So um, so this is going to be my setup. I'm using the Rode, uh, I can't remember what they're called. Um, is it mentioned down there? I can't remember. It's the one with the built-in microphone anyway. I'm going to be using that to, to record myself. Uh, but I do like how I can just quickly turn that around, you know, to shoot the front uh, and get it around that way. So, fantastic, isn't it? Great little setup. I can tilt this backwards and forwards uh, as well. Um, and I just stick it onto, um, I just stick it onto a decent tripod. Uh, I've got a uh, massive tripod that I use because there is a bit of weight there and I want to make sure it doesn't fall over. So that's what I'm going to be using. It's got the Tamron 28 to 75 on there. I love that for doing most of my footage because I can zoom in and zoom out. Plus also I can do the really close macro type stuff as well, which really helps too. So just thought I'd show you uh, the setup that's there. Let me just turn that all off. But the beauty is now that I don't have to try and find batteries and stuff like that because I can run it all from this. Now this this little Soonwell, I have reviewed it if you want to check it out, but this little Soonwell handle here is the equivalent of using four and a half Sony Z batteries. So that gives you an idea about the type of charge that you'll get out of using that handle. Um, so. I mean, it's always like I say, I'll really only review something usually if I'm going to use it. And I think that's fantastic, and I will be using that uh, over the coming months. So stay tuned for that. The 360 camera I definitely want to use because I'm looking forward to, like I said, I'm coming out to uh, the US in what, less than two and a half months now. So it's getting really close now. Um, and I, I think this might be fantastic as a travel camera. Uh, to use so I'm really excited about using this in places like Disneyland and when we go out through the uh, Nevada deserts and all that sort of stuff Should, could be fantastic to use for that as well So I will use it in some of my videos It might also add a little bit of production value in some of my YouTube videos So that, that'd be great as well. So let me just check what people are saying in the chat before we actually start today um... Pierre says it's Paris, it's 11 p.m. in Paris. Roy said hi from the UK. G'day, Roy. Um, looks like a solid state beauty. Yeah, it, it does look like a, a, a beauty dish, but I believe because they have that diffuse front on them, it's frosted, um, I believe that the light is softer. So I'll, I'll tell you how it is when I test it. 
Um, little rig life. <laughs> yeah, I know. The grip is too small for my big hands. Um, Trev said, big rig, mate. Uh, ben said, g'day, g'day. Uh, Beyonce said, I uh, sincerely wish you were my grandpa. Or I could borrow so much camera tech. <laughs> I love it. I like using Sony MPF batteries. I have a lot of them. Yeah, I've got a lot of them as well. Um, but I do like, like I said, I like the fact that with that one, I've already got the handle because I do often use handles now. Uh, it's already built into it. Um, and I can run lights and things like that, not having to worry about having all these handles. And, and I think in the end, once you start to add multiple batteries, like for instance, if I'm running that uh, Ninja V and I'm also running, say, a, a light or something like that that I could also attach to this as well, when you add all the batteries onto that, it ends up weighing the same as if I'm using that grip anyway. Um, and the other thing too is, I look, the uh, Z batteries are very, very good. They are really good in the Sony cameras, but if I'm running something that is a very long uh, uh, say speeches or whatever the wedding ceremony and it's going to go for a long long time I don't have to worry about thinking oh the battery may die because I know this is going to last a whole day if I'm running the battery off that uh, with the Z battery so it's just a bit of reassurance uh, and it I, I mean I have six Z batteries so I do have a lot of them um, but I do like having everything built into this one little unit and like I said I do like using handles for video look if I was doing stills I wouldn't be using it um, but if I'm doing video, I, I think it, it's it's a great little attachment. Um, Sam, th uh, Sam, th uh, Sam said thumbs up. Please, yes, if you can give a thumbs up, guys, it does make a difference. Um, because a lot of people don't get the notifications. That is too big. as a kudu top or side handle and I'm gold. Yeah, there is so many different um, rigs that are out there. It just depends on what you want to use. Uh, Trev said, heavy cameras aid in getting stable footage. Yeah, they do, Trev, and I've found that myself. That's one reason why the big boys like Ari and the high-end cinema bodies are so hefty. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, if you have something that's got weight to it, there's something about that your body compensates for that weight. And you're not... I think if it's too light, you move the camera too easily. Whereas if it's a, a hefty type body, I mean, you don't have to lug around the monitor, but I do use the monitor now more than what uh, I've ever used it before. There's a couple of reasons I love using the Ninja is because um, it already pre-renders the footage. So when I go into Final Cut, it's already pre-rendered and you have a much nicer monitor to look at. Remember, on the back of these cameras, that monitor is the downfall of really the Sony cameras. It's four-year-old technology. It's not very good. Uh, if you want to punch in, check exposure, do all other things, um, you get a much better look. Well, let me just... You get a much better look if you can use some form of a monitor. It doesn't have to be a Ninja. I, I just love the Ninja because I can record to it on the SSD. But um, you get a much nicer look... Uh, well, you get a much better idea about focus if you do a manual focus due to the focus peaking is much better. Uh, you can zoom in a lot better and you can also check the exposure and things like that uh, and load LUTs in here. Like I use Leeming LUTs and I can put them inside the Ninja to see exactly how that's working uh, and stuff like that. And, and for video, look, stills, I don't like the weight, but if I'm doing video, it doesn't bother me. Uh, if, if I'm doing stills, I like to move quick because I'm using flash and everything else. Um, if I'm using uh, video like this, it's fantastic. The other thing too is, what's so good about this whole system is that this just unclips at the front. Let me just see if I can show you. And then I can just take that off. So everything is on rails. Let me just see if I can move it. So everything is just on a rail that you can see up the top up there. Um, and then to get it on, all you do is you just sort of click down like that. You've got to push that little, the little thing down. And then it slides on like that, and then you can just lock it. So you can move that to any position over that rail, and then just lock it. But I just love how I can tilt this and, you know, twist it around. It's a, it's a great little system. That's all through Small Rig. Small Rig are brilliant. They have such great stuff. I think they're also having um, some big savings over Black Friday as well, so there's some really good stuff that's uh, gonna come out. Um, K 
Kevin said, wow, David, that's some kind of contraption. Uh, why not just use your um, Moser gimbal? Uh, I like it. Yeah, well, I do. If I'm Kevin, if I'm going to use something that's uh, quick and nimble, I will use the Moser gimbal as well. That's that's more related. It's going to be sitting on a tripod, and, and I'm going to be doing the review, and I'll be moving into it. Um, so that's more like a setup I'd use if, if I'm setting up a tripod. Uh, if I want to move around and do everything else, of course I'm going to use the Moser Air Cross uh, or the Moser Air 2. Um, that's what I'll be using the second I'm starting to move around and that will sometimes have a monitor attached to the gimbal though if I really want to check exposure and, and check focus and things like that. But yeah, I would be using a uh, Air Cross. That's more a stationary type uh, setup than I'm using there. Um, Bjorn says, nice setup, but I wish Sony would give us better displays so we couldn't... Yeah, I know, so do I. I really do. Um, go with the camera. It's a different style of shooting. I've got rid of a gimbal, and sometimes it's better to rig it out. Um, TMB says, hi from CA, David. Hi, TMB. Uh, Victor saying hello. Alexander said, why Tamron release 7080 uh, and not the standard 70 to 200 2.8? Well, Alexander, it's more. it's got to do more with the size. I think that... Tamron wanted to keep the cost down. They also wanted to uh, give the ability to use that 67 millimeter filter thread, which, which goes through the whole range, and it does make sense. Um, I'm certainly tempted by the Tamron 70 to 180. It might be a lens that I get sometime next year. Um, and I'll, I may sell, I'm gonna wait till I test it. Hopefully Tamron, once they can get one in Australia, will uh, lend me one and I can review it. Um, I probably will sell my 70 to 200 f4. Uh, Sony lens and get that 180, but I want to test it first just to see uh, how it is. I very rarely, I don't think I'll miss that extra uh, 20 millimeter on the long end. Um, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with doing that. I mean, I'm more happy that it's going to be light. Uh, it's probably going to be an amazing lens if you think about how the 28 to 75 is. And I just showed you on that, one of my favorite lenses. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be an amazing lens. So I think it's got to do with that, Alexander. It's more to do with weight cost and that filter size that they want to keep standard with the uh, 17 to 28, the 28 to 75 and that 70 to 180. Um, he'll add a top light, no gimbal can handle the odd shape anymore. Yep, that's that's the thing, uh, you're right guy with the camera. As soon as you start to add things like lights and microphones and everything else, it just can't handle it. Uh, then you either need to be using that like you can handhold it, but also you could say put it on a monopod uh, or um, sit it on a really good tripod. Um, Michael Pierce, good day, Michael. Uh, Trev said, uh, Alexander, I'm sure it allowed them to make a smaller lens. Yep, that's what I said. Is it worth buying a monitor for the Sony? Oh, Kevin, thank you so much. Uh, Kevin gave me a 4.99 donation. Uh, appreciate your hard work. Go have a coffee. I will be after this definitely. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, where were we? Is it worth buying a monitor for the Sony Alpha A6300? Yes, yeah. I mean, uh, you've got to understand that the monitors on the back of these cameras, the Sony cameras particularly, are not very good. When I when I went and did that workshop with Yervent and I tried the Canon EOS R uh, and had a look at the monitor on the back, they are so far ahead of what we've got with Sony. Um, but even then, it's nicer sometimes just to have a bigger screen so that you can really check things. You know, you can really look at how your focus is and, and it's a lot easier to see it in that regard. And if you get a screen that has a, a hood over it, um, that makes it even better. You know, and I'll show you the small rig one. Hang on. So this one, this is just using, I think this one is the best view. Oh no, this is the best view one. So this is a cheaper one. This is a desk view uh, monitor. Uh, but you can see that this has that sun hood that comes with that monitor. So that if you're dealing with this outside, you can still use the monitor in, in fairly bright light, which is good. Uh, because the sun hood is quite large on these. So that makes a difference. So if, you know, if you're trying to use an A6300 and you're doing video and you want to get critical focus or something like that or check exposure, uh, it, you'll get a much better result using something like this. You can use the EVF, but the EVF is fairly low resolution on those cameras. Uh, so you'll get a much nicer look if you can use something like this. 
Um, let me just answer a couple more before we start. Um, Michael said, David O, legendary. Can't wait to meet you, Michael. It's not long until I'm in a, a LA now and uh, Santa Monica, just down from you. So looking forward to meeting up. Uh, John said, small rig works with Olympus. Yeah, small rig uh, works with everything. They have cages for everything. Um, I have got an affiliate guide. Let me know if you want it. Um, Michael Brown's, uh, Michael Pierce said uh, he's got the, oh, is that, you've got the 402.8? Is that what you're saying there? Uh, I'm De Brown's here as well. Roy said it'll be interesting to see the image quality of the 70 to 180. Uh, millimeter Sigma 2.8 uh, versus the Tamron. Yeah, it, it will be. And I, look, I think you'll find they're all going to be excellent. That the days where we had lenses like uh, Sigma and Tamron, well, Sigma have always been pretty good. But the days where you had like Samyang, um, uh, Tamron of not having really good image quality are gone now. I mean, they're equal to anything that anyone else is producing out there. So I think those days are gone. And I think we're, like I said, I often say we're blessed now, particularly in the Sony line, because we have so much range of, of lenses and stuff like that that we can use. Uh, and they're all really good. It just really depends on what you'd like, what focal length you like, what f-stop you'd like, uh, things like that. We're going to discuss a little bit about that in once we get into the news today. Alexander says, I will wait till you've tested the Tamron uh, 70 to 200. You mean, the, yeah, the uh, 70 to 180. Um, oh, Tupelo G2 on my Nikon. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, the Tamron 70 to 200 G2 is an amazing lens. That is an a cr incredible sharp lens. The G2 is brilliant. Uh, if they can match that in the 70 to 180, I think we're really on a winner. Um, Tomic says, looks like Tamron is a releasing lens which will not compete directly with Sony lenses. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that shortly when we go through the news. Uh, Jake said, morning from Adelaide where the wildfires have also hit. Uh, wondering about the new Webill gimbal. Has anyone used it? Yeah, I haven't used that, Jake. Uh, I'm more into Moser and uh, the Firetech, but uh, my favourite gimbals are still Moser. Uh, my favourite gimbal of all time so far has been the Moser Air 2. But I think the Aircross 2 would also be really good, but I haven't used that uh, yet. But I love the Air 2. Um, Brian said I uh, use a Swift. Uh, is it a Swift monitor, is it? Cheap but good. Yep, fantastic. You don't have to pay a, a fortune to get a good monitor, guys. That's one of the things about that. Tomic says 28 to 70, 2.8. It's not the same as 2470. Well, it's not, but it, look, the, there's some other features. Uh, as it's a 28 to 75. The other thing is, too, that uh, you gain a fraction on the long end, which can be great for portraiture. So that's one thing you've got to understand there. Uh, yes, you lose a little bit on the wide end, but I've got, it's not here, it's in the other room. I've got a, the 24GM, so I'm not fussed about the 24mm anyway. Uh, if I need to go to 24, I'm going to use my 24GM. Remember, for me, it's not about being, uh, I don't want to be lazy with my lens changing. So if I need to change lenses, I will change lenses. Sometimes people do get a little bit lazy and they don't change lenses enough. Uh, particularly if you're using primes, it gets you into that niche of knowing you've got to change lenses. And most of the times with weddings, uh, like Kerry will have the 2470 on, the Tamron, but I'm using like the 24, I'm using this lens extensively, the Batis 85, and then I'll also use this, the Sony 135GM a lot now. I use that hell of a lot. In fact, since I've got the 135 GM, I've hardly touched my 70 to 200. Um, it's that good, the GM, and I love using Prime. So the, the 28 to 75 doesn't bother me. If I need to use 24, I'll be grabbing the GM 24. But everyone wants to do different things. So, uh, you know, we're all different in what we like. Uh, Dankos says, greeting from Rome. Uh, Ian DeBrown said, forgot who said it may be David McKeegan, uh, but uh, a case was made that Sony dictates or limits what Tamron uh, makes. Yeah, I think he was guessing about that, Ian um, DeBrown. I, I think he was trying to make a guess about it, but it might be a good guess. I'll talk about that when we go through the news in a second. Uh, Joseph said, hey, David, loving the A7R4. Thank you for the advice when I need it. Question, do you think Sony could add more video features like 10-bit? Or 4K60 in firmware. I remember Panasonic adding some bid stuff. They did. They just added a stack yesterday. 
uh, and I really wish that Sony would do the same thing. Uh, in the G9, they've basically brought the G9 up to the GH5. Uh, I think they had a 4K60 uh, Animal IAF, and that's also in video. Uh, and they've also added 10-bit 422. Uh, so some companies are adding amazing things in firmware. I'm not sure Sony can do it because of the heat that's involved. I, I don't know what's going on there, but you know we can always hope, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, and that's it. All right, so let's get on to the first story. So let me just put down here, 30 minutes. Let me just move that over there. So uh, I wanted to bring this up because it's confirmed, well, they're saying it's confirmed now that Tamron are going to, that 70 to 180 FE will ship out in the spring. Uh, so that would be the USA spring. So what's that? It's probably uh, March, is it? Um, so it, it's still a little bit away yet until we can get it. Like I said, uh, I asked Tamron Australia the other day if, if they had any, and they haven't got any in Australia at the moment. They must be hard to come by. Um, so I'll keep in contact with them, and as soon as I can get a version of that lens, uh, obviously I'll go out and review it and use it in, in a number of different scenarios. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, particularly because I'm so interested in seeing how this comes out or compares to what my uh, 70 to 200 is. The, the, the interesting thing is that the 70 to 200 Sony lens, I've got the F4 version because I was never interested in, in lugging around the 70 to 200 uh, lens for most of the work I do. I like that lightweight uh, with uh, portrait lenses. So that's why I love the 70 to 200 F4 so much. And I think it's a very underrated lens. It's very, very sharp really sharp as a matter of fact. So it's going to be interesting to test that against what I'm going to get with the, the Tamron. So the advantage with the Tamron, sometimes when I do dance work and stuff like that, I would love to have a 70 to 200, but I don't like to use the F4 in dance concerts due to the fact that I have to raise the ISO a little bit above sometimes what I'd be comfortable with. Now the reason why I say that is because occasionally some of the dances they use almost no lighting at all. Uh, and you may have to push your ISO up really high. Uh, and I don't like to do that on paid shoots. Um, even though that you can use say up to 6400 quite nicely, if you expose correctly, uh, sometimes I have to push it even further than that. And the other thing too is that with dancing, I have to use a high enough shutter speed to stop the dancers in movement when they're doing their dancing. So it's a combination of sort of doing a high enough shutter speed with uh, uh, the aperture that you've got and then raising the ISO. So having a 70 to 180 that's 2.8 uh, will give me a big benefit over having the F4 in dance work. Like, if you're talking about doing weddings and things like that, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference because um, I'm quite comfortable with a 70 to 200 F4. But it's going to be interesting to see how they compare anyway. I'm interested to see how they both compare in sharpness at a similar aperture. So say F4 or F5.6. Um, and I'll let you know how that sort of works. But the, the advantage is it's nice and light. It's small, it uses the same NDs that I've got for everything else. So in case if I wanted to use it for video, I can use it with video with the same NDs. So there's some big advantages about going for the Tamron over my uh, Sony lens, or I think there will be, but you'll have to wait and see what you know uh, the, re the sort of reviews come out with. Um, so there's a whole stack of information here anyway, talking about uh, different lenses and stuff that I'm gonna go through in a minute, because Tamron have been saying that there's gonna be some other lenses uh, that are coming out. There was a 50mm f2.8 specification here, and I'll, I'll elaborate on these in a minute. There's an 80mm 2.8, and this is interesting. There's a 105 f2.8 uh, lens as well. Wow. 35 1.8, uh, and then there's just some information on this 105 f2.8 uh, lens as well. Um, but the, the, the thing is, I'm not 100% sure that if you've got the 105 and it's only a 2.8 lens, are you just better off to stay with the uh, 70 to 180 2.8? It's it's interesting how they're sticking with their 2.8 specifications. Uh, and like Ian DeBrown De said there, that this Dave McKeegan, I think he's put a video up there talking about that has Sony, because C Tamron are part owned by Sony, I think it's 15%, or I can't remember, there's a percentage anyway that Sony own of Tamron. 
So are Sony saying, yes, well, you know, you, you can do what you like with the lens mount and everything else, but we don't want you to do any really fast glass. Because the interesting thing is, well, I did a recent review of the Tamron 35. That was that 50th anniversary lens that came out. And that was one, I think that is the best 35mm lens I've ever used. I'm not joking, that lens was superb. Check out the review, I did it on a Nikon D810, I think it was. Um, and I think that is probably the nicest 35mm that I've ever used. Um, so I would have loved that to come to Sony. It was a, a 1.4 lens. So there may be something in that fact that Sony are saying to Tamron, well, look, you know, we, we have let you upgrade your firmware through our camera body, just like a Sony native lens will. So there's no restrictions in that regard. So perhaps Sony have said, yes, you can do all that, but we don't want you to release anything around that area where we will have something in that same um, focal length for fast glass. Uh, I mean, it, it's interesting because let, let me come up to here uh, and have a look at this. I'll just put the time in so that we can, if someone's interested, they can go skip to that spot. 35, oh, actually, I'll just put 36. 36. Because uh, Tamron here have said that there are some six the same the six new lenses will be unveiled in 2020 um so this is really interesting so basically what they're saying here is that none of them is likely to be in the fast prime a uh, fast prime so they're saying it's going to be a, a 2.8 lens as they believe uh, perhaps maybe some 1.8 but so they're saying that and they're saying down here that uh sar note i guess uh, some of the new lenses may be unveiled in 2020 but available in 2021. So they might be uh, sort of uh, announced late next year. We may get some next year. Um, and yes, some priority will be zooms like the 100, uh, 150 to 600 FE. That could be a really interesting one um, that if it's nice and cheap and their lenses tend to be really good, some of their zoom lenses. So it's interesting. So it does look like there may be something in the fact that... Um, Tamron aren't going to release a fast glass like that 35 1.4 and I'll show some results from the 24 and 35 in a minute and they look pretty good but they're obviously holding back from releasing anything that is in that 1.8 or 1.4 line like I said that that 35 1.4 was absolutely outstanding and I would love to get that on uh, the FE mount and I'm so hoping that happens but Sony may not want that because that lens blew the 35 Sony uh, 1.4 I had out of the out of the water. I mean, it was just, it wasn't even close. That Tam that Tamron lens is the best uh, optical lens that Tamron have ever produced. It's their 50th anniversary lens, uh, and it's stunning. Uh, and I loved it. It was that sharp. It was incredible. Great focusing. Uh, quiet. It was brilliant. Like I said, I did use it on the Nikon mount though. Um, but it was uh, it was amazing. Um, so I'm so hoping that, well, so they've proven anyway, that they've proven that they can do this amazing glass that's fast. Just for some reason, they're not releasing anything in the Sony line that's, that's sort of lower than that 1.8, uh, the 2.8, um, which could be a couple of things. It may be that they want to stick in that cost, or it might be that Sony have said to them, uh, 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 you can't do that at this stage. Uh, we'd like you to concentrate on that 2.8 lens so you're not really competing solely with our fast glass, uh, which is interesting. And I don't know, I th I'm not sure. Because do you think, and I'd love to know in the chat, do you think that's a good idea? Or because Sigma can do whatever they like, Samyang can do whatever they like, uh, would Sony be better saying to uh, Tamron, yes, please release fast glass because at least uh, it's going to sell more bodies and it will also, they still get their cut because they're a part owner of Tamron anyway. I'd uh, love to know your thoughts about that because it's a really interesting, um, interesting scenario and I'm not sure what's going on uh, in that regard. Um, let me just pop over to the chat because I'd like to see if anyone's saying anything about that or where people are um, chatting from. Um, Triple Zero said 24 GM or Zeiss 25 F2. I have to tell you, Triple Zero Seven, that the, the GM24 is 
unbelievable. I adore that lens. And in fact, I must put up a review of it soon, but I love that lens. It's fantastic. I've got a wedding tomorrow and I will be using that lens so much. Um, I just adore it. I really do adore it. Like I said, I sold my 35 1.4 uh, because of when I got that lens. I just loved it so much. Um, Go with the camera said body plus 17 to 28 swap with a long prime and body plus 28 to 75 uh, i'd probably get the 28 to 75 but that's me and then i get a wider prime but yeah be only because the 28 to 75 is such a, a handy focal length to have plus it also makes a really good portrait lens as well um, I mean, if it was me, I'd, I'd just get the, the body and the 28 to 75 and then get a wide angle like a 24 if you wanted 24 or even wider. Um, you don't need 1.4 until you need 1.4. 1.4 can do F2, but not the other way around. Yep, true. Um, for, foot, uh, for foot photography, I imagine I'd want shallow depth of field, which is hard to get away with the 24 anyway. Um, 1.4 comes in handy for low light video. Yeah, it does. Um, Tomek says, don't get me wrong. I love my Tamron 28 to 75 2.8, but this is one example where Tamron lenses is not fully, is not fully uh, in competition with uh, Sony lenses. Yeah, I, like I said, it doesn't bother me. That, that 20, 28 does not bother me at all because I have a 24. So uh, to me, it's not an issue. Uh, I really would just throw the 24 on when I need it. But I do like the fact I can go to 75, which is getting closer to your 80 mil or whatever, the, a beautiful portrait length. So you're gaining on that side. But don't forget, Tomic, that there's also incredible features with the macro, almost macro from that lens as well. Uh, whether that could be there if it was changed to a 24 mil, I don't know, it'd be a, probably a much bigger, heavier lens. The ND filter would change. So there's big advantages with having it at that size. Oh, I love it, um, but it may not be for you. You may be better off to get the 2470. Um, Tony's saying hi, guys. G'day, Gerald, good to see you in here. Um, Thomas said, by the way, I have uh, the Samyang 24 2.8 uh, for the 24... Um, field of view. Uh, nothing wrong with the Samyang either, the nice lenses. Uh, I would be really surprised if Sony's roughly 15% ownership of Tamron is enough to block products. I've dealt with shareholders with more percentage in companies that don't have that influence. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just an interesting thought I'd love you to think about. I'm not convinced either. It might be just that Tamron at this stage want to concentrate on those lenses. They want to keep the price down of these lenses. Uh, and they want to make them small, you know, fantastic to say throw in a gimbal or for travel. And that might be where Tamron is aiming at this stage of their lenses. The roadmap later on may completely change. We don't know. Uh, they might start to produce fast glass. We know that they can do it. Like I said, that 35 was brilliant. I'd love to get that on Sony. Um... Nivek said, also an antitrust risk. Uh, Gerald says, in Japan, you can own creative controlling interests with less than 50%. It has happened before. Just depends on how the agreements are set up. Read the fine print of their agreement. Yep, thanks for that, Gerald. Um, Tony said, uh, 150 to 600 would be nice. Yeah, it would be for uh, uh, animal and stuff like that. Uh, sports. Um, I'm still considering between the 100 to 400 or the 200 to 600, mostly the 100 to 400. Yeah, it's a tough choice, Tony. I mean, I, I can't really recommend stuff around that because I don't really shoot with that focal length at all. Uh, I mean, others like Gerald has the 200 to 600. Gerald may be able to time in uh, about that as well. So if anyone has the 100 to 400 or the 200 to 600, if you've got both of those lenses, which one would you go for? Uh, if you only had to pick one, let us know in the live chat or in the comments down below, guys, because I'd be really interested to uh, to know. Really appreciate it, guys, too, if you could give me a thumbs up. Um, like I said, I, I am unsupported, and it does support the channel. It gets the uh, show out there. So I'd love you to, if you could, give me a thumbs up. Um, Trev said, seems like Tamron have looked into their have hooked onto their own customers. Their pricing is one of their big appeals. Yeah, and it is. I mean... And I'll show you the results in a minute. They're, those new lenses are actually really quite nice uh, for what they are. Um, Nivek says, still have to wonder if that introduces antitrust risk in other countries, though. Uh, maybe Sony 
gave Tamron access to the AF algorithm in exchange for less competition? Well, who knows? These are the things that I suppose we'll never know, but it's certainly interesting thoughts just to think about it, isn't it? Anybody tried the Sigma 60 to 600 on FE? No, I haven't. Um, sorry, must go. It's 23.36. No worries. You can watch the show later. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah, I thought you meant food photography, not foot. Gerald says, no antitrust anywhere if, if where the cooperation is licensed, if it is written in the agreement. Oh, okay. All right, so let's go on to this next story because I want to show you some samples of these 24 mil and 35. And what are we, 45? 10. 12. So let's look at this because um, there is a review and I'll stick this down below guys so you can have a look at this but the, it's talking about the Tamron 24 2.8 and the 35 2.8 prime lenses uh, compact and affordable primes for Sony um, they're both there. I mean, they're both tiny. These will be amazing lenses to stick on a gimbal. If you wanted to shoot gimbal type stuff or travel really light, uh, they would be a brilliant combination to take because they, they, you could take these anywhere and they are super light and they're really good value too for the money. Um, they're just saying it's, it's been on a hot streak with the lenses like the 28 to 75, um, stuff like that. And the also, the Tamron have this ability to get almost macro-like, and I'll show you this in a minute. They, they really are special in that regard. And like I said, I often don't use macro anymore. I often just use my Tamron lenses to get close enough to shooting the ring shots and stuff like that. And, and you'd be surprised how good you can get them with using a Tamron lens. Uh, I may have to crop in a little bit, but... Boy, the, the results really are outstanding. As you know, It's not one-to-one, -one, but it's still pretty good. Uh, and I'll show some of those uh, uh, things in a minute. Uh, they're, both, they're all extremely light. They weigh about 7.5 ounce. Um, and they're saying you can sit them in your coat pocket and stuff like that. If you're looking here, these are the sizes of the lenses uh, that are there. They are really small. And I, like I said to you all before, that I've found the manufacturing process on the Tamron lenses... Uh, to be incredibly robust, far more than any of my other lenses that I've got for scratches and things like that. Even though it's it's this plastic material on the outside, uh, they're incredibly robust. So, you know, it, it's brilliant in a way that um, how long they last. And in fact, my Tamron 28 still looks like the day I bought it, and that's incredible. Um... They're 249 US and 299 respectively, so they're very, very well reasonably priced. Uh, and they're just showing here the uh, how the lenses look. Um, this is the Tamron 20, 35 and the Rokion 35. The, the Rokion is tiny, isn't it? I mean, that's really small. Uh, if you look at that, that's sort of similar, I think, to the Sony version that I had. Uh, but here is the macro that you get from these lenses. Uh, if you're looking here, this is the Sigma FE35 1.2 close focus. This is the Sigma 35 1.4 close focus. Um, but look at the Tamron, the 35mm close focus there. I mean, it's ridiculous. This is the 35 1.4. That's the one that I used uh, as well, which is uh, even better. It's slightly better than what you're getting with the Sigma 35. Uh, it's probably even slightly better than what you're getting there. But look at the, the Tamron FE. Uh, the, like I said, the close focus is ridiculous. It really is, or it really can get you out of a lot of trouble. And I, like I said, I love using it with detail shots and things like that on wedding dresses and flowers and the engagement rings and all these other things because I can use it all from this lens that I've got without having to even change it to a macro half the time. I do still put a macro on when I want to get that real impact shot of the rings but for most of the shots that are there, detail shots and things like that, the, that almost macro of the Tamron lenses uh, you know, is fantastic. It really is. Um, now this is another close-up that they're talking about here um, with the different lenses. Now it's saying in here that there is, uh, at the moment, there is noticeable distortion on the 24mm. This is what I love about the, the Sony 24. 
The Sony 24 is very, very well controlled. Uh, it, the GM I'm talking about, it really is very, very well controlled. That's why I love that lens so much. In fact, I shoot portraits with that lens. As long as you're not silly and put them right out on the outside. But but the, the distortion on that lens is really quite good. I mean, uh, it's amazing in, in most regards. So obviously at the price range you're paying for this, you're gonna get some distortion at 24. Uh, but they're saying you can correct that easily in Lightroom. Uh, they're saying the update's not there yet. I'm not sure if it's still not, but they're saying it's not there at this stage. Uh, Venetting isn't bad. Uh, it's a little bit present when wide opening, uh, but uh, stopping down to 5.6, it's all gone. Again, Venetting you can get rid of in, in Lightroom as well if you want to go that way uh, as well. But you're not going to get like uh, the quality of if you're buying GM lenses or really expensive lenses. But if you look at some of these results, these are the 24, uh, this is the 24 2.8 lens. Uh, and remember, if you get close, due to the fact that you have that macro ability with these lenses, you can see here, once you get close, even at 2.8, you're going to get a beautiful depth of field. And that's one thing that you've got to understand about the way these lenses work. Yes, it is only a 2.8 lens, but if you get very close, you're going to get great depth of field. Uh, and it looks like it's terrific. I mean, the results to me look beautiful. I mean, I can't see anything wrong with... Uh, any of these images at all. They look nice and sharp looking at them here. And I would expect that. Again, you've got the nice rendering because they've focused on these uh, flowers at the front here. Uh, you're getting them so that you've got that lovely uh, depth of field. Um, there is something a little bit funky going on in the sky here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but... I mean, overall, I think these are really nice. Now, I think down below they go to the 35. So they're all the 24 mil. These are all the 35 2.8 samples. So they're showing all the uh, 35 mil samples now. Again, you can see it's got lovely rendering in the background. Looks Certainly looks sharp enough to me. Um, again, I, I, I think they're lovely. I think they're beautiful results. Uh, the, the Tamrons do give you this sort of... Um, rendering in the background but I like it. it it's everyone likes different rendering and that's the thing it's all subjective uh, again you can see here that it's almost been totally blown out this is showing you that the crop from this version here uh, oh okay I see so it's a crop yeah of that and the detail looks like it's held up really well um, and like I said you also get that ability to almost do these macro type shots uh, as well uh, I can see a little bit of Venetting on the corner through here if you're looking at that side of it there. There's something a bit funky going on over here, but um, Looks like shooting into the Sun's not too bad looking at that uh, Anyway looks looks really good. I think overall they're saying you know, they're giving it a fairly good um, review for the price that you're actually looking at but I, I think if you if you're dealing or if you want to say come in you'd be far better off buying something like this than, than a, a kit lens that you can get with the camera you know like something like the 2470 f4 kit which I used to have and I sold uh, which wasn't very good at all but you'd be far better off to go out and buy a couple of these rather than buying a kit lens uh, and you're going to get the results like I've showed you. It would help your photography far more if you don't have the money to go out and purchase a uh, GM lenses or something like that. There's certainly nothing wrong with uh, getting something like those Tamron lenses, which I think, you know, I, I think they look really good. Uh, and let me know what you think in the chat too. I'm going to cross to you in a minute about that. Great lenses for a gimbal. Fantastic lenses for a gimbal. So for video, they'd be great. Uh, extremely light. Great lenses for travel as well. Like I said, you could throw a few of those just into your coat pockets and travel with them. Uh, fantastic. So I, th I think you might find next, looking at those uh, things that we looked at earlier when we went to here, that there's rumours sort of coming down. Where was it? It was... Um, where did I see that? Down here. You may find that you might get a 50 mil next. If you look at this, there, there's these... Um, patents that have come out for full frame mirrorless glasses, uh, glass that they've come out, which is the 52.8, um, the 80 2.8, um, and the 105. Uh, like I said, the, the interesting thing is though that if you're starting to get to this 105 mil focal length and it's an f 2.8, you may be better just to get to just buy the uh, the 
the um, 70 to 180. Uh, that's the interesting thing that you've got to think about with this. Um, even with the 28 to 75, you may be better off to get the uh, 28 to 75 if you wanted to get that 35 mil and a 50 because they're already incorporated at that at 2.8. It's just going to depend on what prices they come up with, uh, you know, for those sort of lenses. So yeah, it's interesting anyway. Um, now I'll go. I'm, I'm going to keep going and then I'll come back to the chat. Uh, the Sigma 24. This is the next story. Um, 54, 45. Uh, they're just saying that if you order um, the Sigma, this is in Germany, I believe, but it might be the same everywhere else. I haven't checked. But if you're after the Sigma uh, 2470 FE, it's now available for pre-order, and they're saying they're going to ship out on December the 5th. Um, so if you are after the 2470 lens, um, it, it's basically going to come out in three weeks, which is amazing. So... That's really exciting. So, you know, like I said, we've got so many options now. You know, we've got the 28 to 75 on the Tamron side of things. We've got the Sigma Native now 2470 f2.8. We've got the G Master uh, uh, 2470 uh, 2.8. Uh, we, or you can also go adapters as well if you want to go that way. Um, so, boy, are we starting to get options now in the Sony realm? You know, we've got so much choice. And the Sigma lenses are always outstanding. Yes, you've got to justify carrying that weight though, because I can probably almost guarantee that the Sigma 2470, I can't remember, did it, it would weigh more. I'm certain it would weigh more than what the GM is. Uh, I could be wrong there, you never know. But, um, you know, they are always built like those tanks, the proverbial tanks. But you're dealing here with modern technology. This is a modern lens. Uh, I can't wait to see how this performs. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, Lens Rental will review this, reviews this lens when it comes out. Uh, but if you were thinking about getting one, uh, you're going to know shortly exactly how it is. So that's pretty exciting. Um, let's go on to the Sony. I didn't put that in there, actually. Let me put that in. 56, 56. 35. Uh, I was just bringing this up again because um, a what, oh, ages ago I discussed this, uh, that uh, there was, Sony were talking about 12 new FE lenses. They did show that when they were talking about their roadmap of lenses uh, a while ago and uh, they promised Sony 6 have been released out of the 12. So we were thinking about what is next. Uh, so this is quite interesting. Um, so we know six have been announced, so it's the 135 GM. The 200 to 600 FE has been announced. The 600 FE, uh, the Sony 35 1.8, uh, the 16 to 55 2.8, and the 70 to 300. Um, and they're saying now what will be next? Well, there's been rumors for a while that we'll get a 500 F4. I think they still have to bring out something in their sports line, so that makes sense to me. Uh, and they were talking about patenting that uh, 100 to uh, F1.4 for ages. And, and that is a, a real interesting lens I'd like to look at as well. I loved using the Sigma 105 uh, lens as well. Sometimes a 135 is just too long. So having a 100 or 105, 1 1.4 would be amazing. It's going to be a big honking lens, but um, that could be an amazing one for Sony to bring out. Uh, they're saying also, what about, the, and this is the thing that I think Sony really lacks a really wide angle. Um, I'd love them to come out with a 12 millimeter, something like that, that's an auto-focusing 12 mil. Uh, you know, they're saying here 18 mil, 1.8, 21, 1.4, 24, 7 GM. I, I think there's no doubt that they're gonna release new GM versions sooner or later. They'll, they'll definitely update the 2470. Not that that's a bad lens, but remember it is starting to get old now and like Nikon and Canon have always updated their lenses. They need to put those linear focus motor, motors in those lenses. So you'll probably find that the 2470 and the 70 to 200 will get updates. Um, uh, you've also got the 50 1.2 they're saying here. The 85 1.2, I would love Sony to bring out an 85 1.2. Boy, would I love that. Please, Sony, bring that out. If you can compete with Canon, um, that would be brilliant. Uh, I'd love to have an 85 1.2 uh, and a 200 F2. 
So it, it's interesting. So there's stacks of stuff here that, that people are, or, or Sony Alpha are saying, what would you get? I, I really would love, like I said, I think the missing thing really is a really good wide angle. Uh, yes, they have the 24, but I'd love them to do a wide angle prime I'm talking about, like a 12 millimeter or a 15 millimeter. And um, it's surprising that the lowest they've picked here is the 18. Um, I'd love them to do something like a, you know, a 12 millimeter. Uh, that would really, and I'd buy that tomorrow because that's something I would love. Um, so let me know in the chat in a minute what you think Sony uh, should bring out next. I'd be curious to know. Um, and lastly, uh, Sigma are just working on, I just wanted to bring this up because this was interesting. Um, it's not Sony related, but 59, 50. Uh, I didn't know, I thought this wasn't possible because I thought they patented their lens mount, but there must be some way around this because Sigma is saying they're working on a Canon RF roadmap for 2020. So again, this is a really interesting, um, story because uh, Canon lenses, look, they are outstanding. I mean, they really are outstanding. Um, but the problem is they're so expensive, um, it's hard to justify the cost of them. But if, if you could get a third party, and I think this might be, if, if they're smart, they'll allow this to happen. And I think having closed lens mounts is a real mistake for these companies like Nikon and Canon. It's it's not a good way to go because I think you need that competition uh, to sell your bodies and everything else. Uh, so I think it's a little bit short-sighted. So this is interesting how this has come about, uh, you know, that they're saying that um, they're going to have this roadmap uh, for releasing Sigma lenses on um, Canon R mount. That's really all I wanted to show on that. Uh, I'd love to know what you think about that as well. So let's just go quickly to Q and A. Uh, and have a look what you guys are talking about before we finish for the day. One, oh, one, oh, oops, one, oh, one, one, oh, one, fifteen. That'll do. Okay, so let's go. Let me just clear that off with Q and A. Let me just scroll back a little bit. Triple Zero Seven says, "I'll carry the one hundred to four around on one hour hikes. Hardly notice it sometimes. Very compact. Thanks for saying that." Um, Gerald says, and "See, Gerald's um, got both, I think, or used both. Uh, I personally choose the two hundred to six hundred over the one hundred to four hundred, but I also have the seventy to two hundred GM. Depends on what you like to shoot. For wildlife, I suggest the two hundred to six hundred." Um, I'm trying to offload my 70 to 300 now since the 100 to 400 means I'll never carry the shorter range. Wish I, uh, we had a forum to buy, sell. Yeah, I know. Um, guy with the camera says, big lens is such a hassle. Um, Triple says, Tony, uh, you'll always want the longer range. The wow factor wears off quickly and you start wanting to shoot barely visible of my life. Uh, Tony said, uh, it would be interesting comparing the Tamron 24 against the Samyang 24. Yeah, it would. Uh, I don't know whether I'll be able to get a copy of that uh, Samyang though. I have the 35 and it's so light and it's going to be um, going out. What's that? <laughs> and it's like going out nude. I love it. The, the problem for me is that in, here in Australia, those lenses are really expensive, the Tamron lenses. Uh, they haven't followed, for some reason, the pricing hasn't followed the US uh dollar for dollar. Uh, they're around $600 here, which is ridiculous. I spoke to Tamron about that and said, I think that's crazy. Uh, I think it's way too expensive for what they are down here. Um, so, you know, there's no way I'm going to be sort of paying for that, that sort of money. I'd prefer to go out and spend a little bit more and get the 28 to 75. Um, so they're expensive here. But if you're in the US and other places that they're really reasonably priced, um, Gerald said, uh, beta, uh, uh, testers have shown that the 100-400mm with the one times 4 extender is not as good as the IQ shot with the 200 to 600. Yeah, I'd probably expect that, uh, Gerald, so it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, Oreo's here. G'day, Oreo. 
Tony said, interesting, Gerald. I'll assume that the overall G-Master would be better there. Um, Torben says, I'm on a very tight budget. G'day, Torben, too, by the way. I'm on a very tight budget and may get the Samyang 24 mil, but the Tamron 24 does look very good. I wasn't too impressed with the Samyang 35 2.8, so I'm a little hesitant about their 24 2.8. Yeah. I mean, I think if I could uh, justify that little bit extra, I'd get the um, Tamron, uh, Torben. Particularly looking at those results that I just showed a minute ago, I thought they looked excellent. Um, and then, like I said, also, you've got the ability of updating firmware through the camera. Uh, you know, you're guaranteed that it's probably going to focus like a native Sony lens and things like that. It'll probably be quiet for video. There's there's a lot of other things as well about that, that if you get buying the Tamron over the other one. Um 2.8 is fine for landscape photography. Yep, exactly. Um, Carl says 1099 US for the Sigma 2470. It's pretty good, isn't it, Carl? I mean, that is a very reasonable price. Uh, oh, as Carl said there, yep. Um, I think that will sell very well. I'll be really surprised if that doesn't sell very well. But like I said, it's, it's great to have options, isn't it? Because you don't have to now go out and buy a G Master. Yes, the G Master is still amazing, but if you want to save some money and buy two lenses, you can do that now. You know, like save money, go and buy the Sigma 2470. Just wait for reviews to make sure it is good. But um, if it is good and I expect it to be, there's no reason why I don't think it will be. Uh, Sigma lenses are always very good. Um, so if that is a really good lens, the money you're saving, you, you've got enough money to go out and buy another lens. It, it's certainly... Uh, Interesting. So, Gerald, this is interesting. Said so the Sigma 2470 2.8 is 835 grams. Um, oh, so it's pretty close, really. Uh, the Sony 24.7mm uh, 2.8 is 885. So the Sigma is a little bit less. That's interesting. Hmm, thanks, Gerald. Thanks for sharing that. I would have thought that would have been the other way around. Thanks, Gerald. Uh, Torben says, um, who's the a-hole giving a thumbs down? Oh, who knows? <laughs> I get them instantly. The second I post a video, I get a thumbs down. It's crazy. Um, it makes me laugh every single time. I often wonder, like you wonder why they um, they watch. Like, I, you know, the interesting thing is I must put a video out about this because it doesn't bother me and Kerry and myself laugh about it. But young people must really, it must upset them. And as particularly with comments and things like that that get associated with it. I can be 100% honest with you that I have never, ever given a thumbs down to any reviewer ever. And there's some that I hated, but I just move on. Uh, and I'm certainly not subscribed to those people. The interesting thing is that the second I post a video, I'm almost talking about the second, it will get a thumbs down. And that's really interesting. So it shows that I've got a hater out there or a few haters that no matter what I post, are just gonna put a thumbs down. They're just nasty people. Uh, they really are. They should get a life. It's awful, really. Um, 70 to 300 is a crop lens. Yep. Um, what else have we got down here? Has there been a Lightroom update for the 17 to 28? I think they came out. Uh, I can't remember. Um, Keb said, do you advise to wait uh, for the Sigma 70 to 200 2.8 or buy the Tamron 70 to 180? Uh, well, look, we don't know yet when the 70 to 200 will come out. Uh, if you need that focal length at the moment, uh, but, but just hang off a little bit. Like, I wouldn't buy the 70 to 180 until you've seen some reviews. We have to make sure that it's good yet. Um, and like I said to you, I'm always going to be honest with you. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm only going by what I'm, I'm used to seeing with the 28 to 75 and the 17 to 28. It might be better, uh, Kebs, to just hang off a little bit. Uh, but it depends also because see, if if it's a really in demand lens, then you might have to wait 12 months. See, th this is the 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 problem with what you do. Like the 28 to 75 took 12 months before you could buy it. So. I suppose you could put it on pre-order, the 70 to 180, and then if you don't like it, you could always return it if you buy it from someone like B&H or the company allows you to do that. Um, yeah, it may sell very well. If, if it's a great lens, I think it will sell extremely well. If it's not so great, well, then you might be able to get a copy fairly easily. You know, it just depends. It's, it's a very hard thing to know. Uh, 
Tony said, Tony Lindrum has a review of the Samyang 24. Check that out. Peter's a great guy. Um, guy with the camera says, 105 F2 will be a dream for me, like the 100 uh, macro planar. G'day, Jim. Good to see you on here. Torben said, David Osa, very true about the other advantages regarding the Tamron 24 over the Samyang. Yeah, I think that's what you've got to think about, Torben, is all those other advantages can be a big deal. Um, 830 gram weighs less than the GM. Yeah, I know. I was really surprised about that. I was certain it would have weighed more. Andre said, SanDisk saved me. I have their rescue software for files recovery, and currently it is incompatible with Mac OS Catalina. Oh, I asked them to move my license from... Uh, to Windows, and they did that in seconds. That's fantastic. Uh, Sony sent me out a new card too. I noticed they've been discontinued. I wonder if there was issues with that card. Um, I'm a bit anxious now about using that card again because like I said, I've had two of those cards that have gone. Sony just sent me another one, um, but I noticed they have been discontinued. Whether that's just because the Sony Tough cards have come out now, I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, it is great support, Andre. Um, Gerald said, uh, testers have found that the 200-600 G lens has equal or better IQ to the 100-400 GM. Amazing but true. The 200-600 is really a GM in IQ but has dual linear motors. Yeah, and that's one big deal about that, Gerald. You're right. That dual linear motors, uh, they're amazing. Um, must be some <laughs> millennial kid. <laughs> I love it. Um... Derek says, I'm with you about Sony releasing a 12 or 40 millimeter. Yeah, I know. Why don't they do that? Like, why is that just something that is just never worried about? I can't understand why they don't want to bring out a wide angle prime. It would be fantastic. Um, I really wish they would. Uh, Jim said, thumbs up, please. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Andre says, 14 or 15 GMF2, but I believe it will be a 2.8. Um, Darius says, I, hi, David. Fine to see you live. Yeah, welcome, mate. You just near the end though. Oreo said, remember, the longer the lens, the higher the impact of Sony's autofocus dual motors. The short lens and 2470 zoom will uh, not really need the new motor. I know, because you're really I know you're really happy with your 2470 Oreo. Um, Jim said, it's Michael, Maestro, uh, Pierce, Hope, all is well, buddy. Oh yeah, Michael, yeah, Hope, uh, Michael's well. Um, and that's about it, we've caught up. Uh, so just to let you know, I've got a wedding to do tomorrow. Um, so obviously I won't be online live. I mean, if I get time, I might come on live and just show something I'm doing on the day. Uh, I have got those reviews. Stay tuned for the review of this, uh, little beauty that I've got, this Insta360. Uh, dying to try this out. Can't wait. Should be a lot of fun with this new, I don't know what it does, but <laughs> with the new Insta360, this, uh, bullet time thing. I've got no idea what that means, but I'll have to look at it. And also that light that I've got, I'll be doing the light... For that as well um what else uh, apart from that yeah that's about it so thank you so much everyone for uh today it's been fantastic thank you for the support you're showing uh just let me read a couple of these last questions before we go jess said just bought my first pro photo wow jess uh, equipment with the pro photo a1x and i love it even though it was expensive but when i work with it i think uh more of it is a good investment yeah well congratulations jess uh, amazing uh lights uh joel said i want to switch from the 70 to 300 but not sure if i'll wait for the 70 to 180 or get the 70 to 200 f4 just wait for the reviews joel because then you might make it it might be easier for you to make a decision i'll do a direct comparison probably between the 70 to 180 to the 70 to 200 f4 that's if i still have the 70 to 200 f4 um I would like to see some kind of 15 to 30 2.8 uh, with a 82 millimeter filter. Interesting. That's obviously for video and stuff and stop vignetting. Uh, Gerald said, did you mention the Facebook group? No, I didn't, Gerald. Uh, I will put the link down below too, guys, that um, if you haven't joined the photography group, please join it. Uh, let me just come here. Um, I think I had it as, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just bring it up and just show you. We're up to 5,600 subscribers now, guys. It's amazing. Um, just let me show this. Yeah, it's getting to be uh, unbelievable now, like how many we're starting to get. Um, I obviously put when I'm going to go on live and stuff like that, but we share stuff all the time. You can see Gerald's a moderator. He shares stuff uh, all the time as well. 
Uh, we've got great photographers posting all the time asking for techniques and what would look better and things like that. Um, we've got so, such good stuff in there. The stacks of stuff now, people posting their travel photos from London, which is, uh, has been some amazing stuff. Um, experiences with Loon, Lumina... Oh, don't get me started on that again. I'm so <laughs> I, I copped it last week a little bit on Aaron's show. I just said, I'm so sick of seeing this. They must be paying that many people at the moment for... Um, I'm not saying it's bad, but boy, are they marketing this with 20 million uh, YouTubers and stuff at the moment. Uh, the interesting thing is I had someone talk to me about this and they were saying, uh, but then I can get rid of Lightroom. But the, the thing is, you pay $10 and you get Lightroom plus Photoshop. This program is not going to replace Photoshop. And that's one thing everyone needs to understand, that you are still going to need Photoshop no matter what you do. Uh, really, I, I think Photoshop's the industrial standard. Yes, you might be able to say potentially get rid of Lightroom and, and use this Luminar or whatever it is to replace that, but you're still going to have to pay the $10 for Photoshop anyway, and you get Lightroom in that for nothing. Um, stacks of stuff anyway. I mean, everyone's posting. It's, it's just a great site, guys. We, we want this to be a safe place where people can post without feeling threatened. Like most groups out there, honestly, they can be complete a-holes. Uh, and they are such nasty people. Well, we just don't allow that on this site at all. I'll stick the link down below. Uh, so if you do want to join it, please do. Uh, it's just a fantastic group, uh, and it, I think it's probably the most positive place on on uh, Facebook, and I really do believe that. And other people that have joined the group have also said the same thing. Um, so <laughs> I love it. Darius has also said too. I'm so I'm so sick of Luminar ads everywhere. I know they are absolutely everywhere. Please stop it. It's ridiculous. I love looking at gear reviews because it's often different. But when you're seeing stuff spammed at you every two minutes everywhere, I just oh no, not another one. It, it does my head in. Uh, I'll, I'll, MJ, it's the photography and videography school. I'll stick it in the link below right now. So as soon as this thing finishes, uh, it'll be in the link below. Uh, so you'll be able to get it from there. Um, I'll stick it in here right now, actually, in the live chat. Let me just grab it. Um, so it's this page here on Facebook. Copy. That's if it'll let me put it in. I'll try. Sometimes it doesn't let you stick them in. That's the group there. All right, so it's in the live chat now. So if you do want to join it, please click on that link. I'll stick it also in the link down below so you'll be able to put it uh, in there as well. Um, and that's about it. So thanks so much, everyone. Um, I'm going to uh, hop off now because I want to go and get a coffee. Uh, apart from that, I'll see you all in the next video uh, whenever I post that. So thanks for the support, everyone. Have a great day and have a great weekend too. Bye for now. Bye.